Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, brought to you by my generous patrons at Patreon.com slash DrNerdLove. And I have a question for you. How many of you are happy with your life right now? Odds are, not as much as you could be. You probably have a list of major changes that you have been wanting to make. You may have even looked at the current pandemic as your chance to make it all happen, to actually go through that list and make those changes. So tell me, how far have you gotten on that list? If you're like most people, you probably started off attacking it like a man possessed, only to find your motivation and your desire drained away. Now you're basically back to where you started, just more frustrated than before and wondering why you're such a failure. Except you're not a failure. Here is a little secret. This was always going to backfire on you. Not because there's anything wrong with you, you are not a failure. The problem is that you, like most folks, were trying to make changes to your life in the worst, most inefficient way possible. More often than not, when you are trying to make major improvements to your life and reach lofty goals, you're trying to will yourself into making it happen. And that is simply not going to work. Maybe you've seen that tweet going around about how if you don't come out of quarantine with a new side hustle or a new skill, then it's proof that you didn't need time, you just lacked discipline. Yeah, that's some old bull Ignoring the obvious things like people who are working from home and balancing childcare, maybe having to homeschool, and the way that the stress of the pandemic actually weighs on your mind, the fact is that discipline and willpower aren't enough, not in and of themselves. Not because your willpower is weak or because you're not disciplined enough, but because everything from your environment to your biology is arrayed against you. And I know that it is very tempting to believe that with enough grit and fortitude and discipline, you can accomplish anything. And you can, right up until you can't, which happens a lot sooner than you'd realize. And that is true for everyone. That is true for me, that is true for The Rock, that is true for you. The problem is that willpower is a finite, limited resource, and you are fighting against influences that you don't see, which sap your willpower and your energy every single day. You, like everybody else, have a number of emotional and mental habits that you aren't aware of, psychic triggers that you have built up through repetition and association. You've got the couch you always fall asleep on, the room where you can't concentrate on work because you're always distracted by the TV and your gaming console. These are almost Pavlovian responses that you weren't aware that you were training yourself into having. And now that you're trying to do things differently, you are having to fight against all those associations and those habits which sap your drive and your will. That is why you can't just will yourself into making better decisions and achieving your goals. That is why so many of your attempts at getting your life together have failed. If you want to achieve more, then you need to do less. No, for real, your brain is lazy. It wants to conserve energy. Not expending energy means that you don't need as many resources to survive, and doing stuff requires energy. Building new habits requires even more energy, and so it's more efficient to stick with what you already do, even when those old behaviors and habits are emotionally upsetting or unfulfilling. If you want to build a new life for yourself, if you want to get your life together, then you need to know how to maximize your chances of making positive changes and making them stick without exhausting yourself in the process. And that's why I want to give you these five things that you need if you want to make your life better. Number one, cut down on the things that sap your attention and willpower. The first thing that you need to remember is that willpower is limited and you are expending it in ways that you don't realize. The more things that you have to try to will yourself to resist or will yourself to do, the faster you will end up burning through it. And this is very hard, especially now, because we live in an age where almost everything is competing for your time and attention. Having to constantly resist those temptations leaves you with less willpower and energy to do the things that you want or need to do. Social media, especially Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are a classic example of this. 
The constantly updating nature of social media is a near permanent distraction. Social media sites are designed to maximize the amount of time you spend on those pages, and the badges and notifications serve to tweak your brain and make you think, oh, I need to go see what happened. The urge to check Twitter real quick pulls you away from whatever it is you were doing, and now you have just lost an hour without even realizing it. That happened to me as I was working on this episode. I got sucked into a long Twitter thread and all the little sub discussions and all the notifications. It was a mess. So if you want to get your life together, then you have to start making yourself aware of all those time and attention sucks. This includes social media, video games, television, websites, porn, that cut into the time that you want to use to work on yourself and pull you away from your goals. Don't get me wrong, you do not need to cut them out entirely, but you do want to cut down or back on as many distractions and draws on your time, attention, and will as possible because making changes of any sort is already an uphill climb. You want to make sure that you're not making that climb harder by expending your energy on unnecessary things. Which actually leads us into our next tip, tip number two, make it easier to do the things you want to do more of, make it harder to do the things you're trying to avoid. Here's the thing about human nature. We want to take the easy path. If one option is easier than the other, we are much more likely to pick that one, even when the difference is fairly minimal. This is especially true when it comes to those little impulsive choices that we don't think about. When you're hungry and want a snack, the odds are that you are going to pick the choice that is nearest to hand and easiest to access. That's why it's easier to hit up the office vending machine for a candy bar than it is to run down to the corner store for an apple, some cheese, or a cup of sliced melon. However, you can actually use this to your advantage in a way that helps you make the choices you want to make and avoid making the choices that you don't. By making the positive or more desirable choice simpler and easier to achieve, you end up expending less willpower. You don't have to work as hard to resist the choices that you're trying to avoid, and you don't have to try to motivate yourself as much to make the choice that you know that you should be making. Take cutting down on time sucks and distractions. If you have to actively ignore social media, then you're just draining your willpower. But if you make it just a little less convenient, you don't have to work as hard. Turning on Do Not Disturb, for example, cuts out all of the non-vital notifications. You know, the ones that are designed to make you hop back on Facebook or Twitter. Using apps or browser extensions like Freedom or Rescue Time let you block websites that would otherwise eat away your time and distract you from the things that you're trying to get done. If you're trying to, say, get in the habit of eating healthy, Having fruit easily available while the junk food is at the back of the cabinet makes it that much easier to grab an apple instead of the chips when you're having a craving. Or if you're trying to, say, cut back on your out of control, uh, I don't know, diet Dr. Pepper habit, just to uh, pull a completely random example out of the air. Seriously, it's a sickness. Having a bottle of water next to you means that you are less likely to walk the extra 10 feet to grab a soda from the fridge. Even putting your Xbox controller in a drawer or taking the batteries out makes it that much simpler to avoid losing hours to gaming. By the same token, cutting down on the steps that it takes to do the thing that you want to do reduces the amount of energy and effort it takes to do them in the first place. Laying out your exercise clothes before you go to bed makes it easier to just get up, throw them on, and go for a jog when you wake up in the morning. Preparing your meals in advance on Sunday means that you have to expend less energy deciding what to eat and then cooking it during the week. This also applies to improving your social skills as well. If you leave your phone powered off, or leave it in the car or what have you when you go to make your morning Starbucks run, it's much harder for you to use your phone as an excuse to avoid talking to people. A lot of you may have noticed that none of this prevents you from, say, falling down the YouTube rabbit hole anyway and wasting hours of time. After all, it's pretty easy to shut off the app or just dig into the cabinet for that bag of salt and vinegar chips that have been calling your name. But the fact that there are a couple of extra steps, no matter how minor, means that it is much easier to resist that impulse. And having the more desirable option closer to hand makes it easier to make that choice instead of having to 
force yourself into it. Tip number three, use routines, ritual, and structure to build success. The hardest part of any self-improvement regimen is the difficulty in breaking old habits and building new ones instead. There are a number of roadblocks that stand in the way of making long-term changes stick, and that includes everything from the ease of falling back into old habits to the inability to pay what's known as the opportunity cost. There are only so many hours in the day, which means that anything that you do comes at the expense of time to do something else. Deciding that you want to add something into your life, working out more for example, means that you'll have less time for other activities. Running every day means that that time is going to have to come from something else. That may mean having to get up earlier, having less time for video games, or simply spending less time farting around on the internet. All of this requires willpower. And running out of willpower means that you are less likely to make the necessary choices. In order to make it easier to make and maintain those changes, you want to get to a point where it becomes just something that you do. The quickest and simplest way is to use routines, ritual, and structure in order to build those changes into your daily life. You already have rituals in your life that you don't think about. They're just the things that you do more or less on autopilot. For a personal example, the first thing I do in the morning after I get up is go and clean the coffee pot and make a fresh pot of coffee. I do this every morning. Granted, this is usually because I forgot to do it the night before, but at this point, it's just how I start my mornings. You likely have similar rituals, the things that you do every day that you don't have to think about. Incorporating the changes that you want to make into your routine makes it that much easier to maintain them. And by having structure in your life, a set schedule or routine that you follow every day, you make it easier to keep those changes without having to think about it. It means that you know what you're going to do without having to spend time or energy deciding or working your way up to doing it. If you know that you go jogging on Mondays and Wednesdays, do yoga on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and weights on Fridays and Sundays, then you don't have to expend additional effort to say, okay, so today I'm going running, uh, but my feet are tired and it's kind of ugly out. And you know, I haven't checked the turnip prices yet. Similarly, if you make a point of going out every Thursday evening to work on being social, it becomes routine for you. You don't have to motivate yourself to make this extra effort. It is just the thing that you do every Thursday. And the longer that you do it, the more that it becomes the emotional or mental equivalent of muscle memory. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to expend extra energy to make it happen. It just becomes the thing that you can do almost automatically. At the same time, having routines and structure also means that you have made a point to carve out the time to make it happen. You know that from the hours of 3 to 4 p.m., you are going to be doing X. That means you don't have those moments of, oh, I was going to cook dinner or hit the gym or do that Rosetta Stone lesson, but oops, spent too long on Gears Tactics. And honestly, there is a certain comfort in keeping a routine going. Knowing your schedule for the day, even if you're just accounting for certain hours each day, is one less thing you have to think about, which makes it easier to use your willpower in other areas where you might need it. Tip number four, if it's not fun, you won't do it. This one can be tricky. Part of why it is so easy to let the changes you're making to your life fall by the wayside is that, frankly, a lot of them suck. I don't care how devoted you are to your clean food diet, there are few things that are as amazing as the right combination of sugar, fat, salt, and carbs. Let us be real, gentlemen. The calorie is how we measure how delicious something is. The same goes for exercise. Some folks may get that runner's high, but uh, the rest of us got some bad sh because when we're done, we don't feel amazing. Mostly, we're praying for the sweet release of death. But the more that you can find ways to make those changes something that you enjoy doing, or at least something that you can tolerate alongside something that you do enjoy, the easier it is for you to stick with it. Sometimes this means finding a version of whatever it is that you're doing that you find fun. Some people don't like jogging, but if you gamify it with an app like Zombies Run, then you're much more likely to 
stick with it. It's easier to maintain a habit when you're playing as Runner 5 and dodging zombies than it is to just go do wind sprints. Plus, if you're the guy who thought it was clever to say that the only way you would run is if you were being chased, Martial arts, basketball, dance classes, even something like Dance Dance Revolution or Ring Fit are all ways of getting cardio in without necessarily feeling like you're exercising. Alternately, you may have to just double things up. For me, running or going to the gym is how I get caught up on podcasts or shows. I have certain shows or YouTube videos that are my designated workout shows, and I only watch them or listen to them when I'm running or at the gym. You can apply this to other areas of life as well. For a lot of folks, finding areas where you can develop your social skills and meet people in the process can be difficult. The idea of, say, going to a bar and talking to strangers is their vision of hell. But if you're going to an event based around some something that you already enjoy. A geeky themed meetup, a convention, a gaming event. It is much easier to start talking to people. You already know that you have things in common and you have an instant conversation starter baked into the event. It may take a little thinking outside the box to find the way to make certain improvements more fun, but finding whatever kludge works for you can help bridge that gap until you reach the point where you enjoy the activity for its own sake. Tip number five, you have to do the actual work the right way. This part is where a lot of people get tripped up. Remember what I said about how our brains are lazy? That doesn't just apply to the amount of willpower and discipline it takes to get started. It also applies to the ways that we trick ourselves into thinking that, oh, we're actually doing the work. The most obvious example are the times when people get into a research spiral. If you, for example, read book after book on dating and watch video after video on social skills, it can feel like you're making progress, but all you're really doing is tricking yourself. You feel like you're working when you're just delaying things. You're spinning your wheels, not putting in the ass and chair time. Um, metaphorically speaking. Now, I get it. The work it takes to get better at anything can seem like a long, intimidating slog. It is understandable that you're gonna look for things that make it feel easier or seem faster or let you pull it off without as much effort. That's part of why people get sucked into scams or buy into grifters who will teach you magical ways of getting women into bed. It feels easier, it seems faster and more achievable than, you know, going out, talking to people, learning to be more charismatic. That's also why it is so easy to assume that positive change is impossible and to just give up instead. Believing that only certain people can be good with women and that everybody else has just been f***ed by the fickle finger of fate is easier than recognizing that social success is about practice and effort. It is just practice that most folks weren't even aware that they were doing in the first place. But at the same time, you may also be psyching yourself out of actually putting in the effort by assuming that you have to do it in huge Olympian chunks. We see people talking about their multi-hour workouts or their 4,000 word writing sprints and assume that the only way to improve is that you have to have equally epic sessions, and you don't. If all you have is 15 minutes to get a workout in, then work out for 15 minutes. If you do that three to five days a week, that adds up very quickly. If you can only write in 500 word bursts, then do that. 500 words, five days a week, gives you a novel length manuscript in about five months. You can improve your social skills just by talking with people at lunch, or while you're waiting to get your coffee in the morning. You can improve your diet with one meal at a time. The key isn't making massive epic changes. That is how you burn out and backslide. Small changes that don't require as much effort or willpower are easier to start, easier to maintain, and easier to build upon. They may seem insignificant, but they add up quickly. Doing more by doing less lets you make significant lasting changes for a lot less effort. And one other thing that helps you make significant improvements in your life, having a community of like-minded people who are working on the same things that you are and 
having someone to teach you and guide you through the process. That is why I am starting the Dating Accelerator Program, an eight-week seminar where I will be teaching you and a limited number of students how to transform your dating life and what it takes to find the social success you have always wanted. Right now, I am taking a limited number of students for the beta test, and like I've said previously, I've extended the sign-ups for this because of the pandemic. I wanted to make sure people had a chance to get settled, to be a little bit more secure, to feel like they are ready before they decide whether or not it is time for them to invest in themselves. Now, the signups are still open, but they will close soon. And because this is the beta test, people who sign up now will be getting the beta test prices. The price will go up later on. So if you want in, now is the time. Visit nerdloveacademy.com slash the dating accelerator program, or click the link in the show notes to learn more and to reserve your spot in the program. All right, that is gonna do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for turning in. So, you have heard from me, now I wanna hear from you. How have you made improvements to your life and made them stick? Share your story and the way that you made it happen in the comments below. Meanwhile, if you wanna take time during the quarantine to develop your social skills, learn how to meet new and amazing women, and take a level in sexy badass so that you will be ready to hit the ground running when things open up again, then be sure to check out my book, New Game Plus, The Geek's Guide to Love, Sex, and Dating. This is the instruction manual you have always wanted, the A to Z guide for learning how to develop and unleash your inner Casanova and find the relationship you have always wanted. Links to buy it are in the show notes, so go check it out. And if you do check it out, or any of my other books for that matter, do me a huge, huge favor. Please be sure to rate and review it on Amazon and Goodreads. It is a huge, huge help for me. Now we're at the point where if you're digging the series, then you already know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, make sure all your friends know about it, yada, 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 schmackety. But if you are really enjoying these videos, if you feel like you're getting a lot out of it, you're finding that it's really helping you and you wanna support the channel and in the process, help fund some awesome new projects, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 is a huge help. It covers the hosting, it covers the cost of the equipment, and it's like I always say, I cannot do this without the support of my patrons, so thank you all so very, very much. Meanwhile, follow me on Twitter at, at DrNerdLove. Join the private Facebook group Nerd Love Academy at facebook.com slash group slash DrNerdLove. And as always, hit that logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will see you here next time with more about love, sex, and dating. Thanks for watching.